Hello everyone, my name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and a former professional MCAT tutor. I run this channel and this business with my brother John. So we normally make videos, and if you look back you'll see this, we normally make videos about the MCAT and studying and stuff like that. We don't really veer that much outside of it, but I kind of wanted to make a different video today because I just finished my OB-GYN clerkship and I'm starting my pediatrics one right now. I'm on like day three. But I just kind of think that, I don't know, I was bored with MCAT and I wanted to make a video about what it's like to be an OB-GYN or what it's like to be at least a medical student on my OB-GYN clerkship and kind of what I saw and what I think of the specialty, etc. I won't belabor some of the like more practical points like what OB-GYN is. I mean, it's obstetrics, which is like delivering babies, managing pregnant people, and then gynecology, which is like female genital tract doctors. And of course you can go and kind of get the specifics on like med school insiders. So you want to be an ob guy, and I'm sure he has that. But I just want to talk about like my experience on it. I don't know if everyone's med school is this way, but the med school that I go to, like the ob guy and clerkship is seen as like notoriously one of the most difficult, one of the most intense, one of the most time consuming, one of the most toxic, unfortunately. And and so I was terrified and also had like no interest in OB-GYN like going into it. And so I was like, this is just going to be like, a you know, two months where I'm just like suffering. But I guess the broad overview is that I was shocked at how much that I liked it and just the scope of what happens in there, like all the different kind of aspects of, of OB-GYN that there is. So let's chat about it. First off, my med school does it in two months and four weeks is on gynecology, which is what I was on first, like in January, and then four weeks is on OB. Gynecology, like my hospital has a lot of different subspecialties, so we rotated through gynecologic oncology, so um, cancers like cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, etc. We were through urogyn, so a lot of like urinary incontinence problems and surgeries, and benign gynecology, so think like fibroids or endometriosis care, stuff like that. Like anything that's not like cancerous. And then on the obstetric side, we did three weeks of labor and delivery, so like seriously like delivering babies just the whole time. And then, I mean, one week of clinic that I don't think you guys care about that much, but one week of clinic where we took, we took care of like high risk obstetrics people, so like you know, we had some moms come in with like thyroid issues and they were trying to manage that in pregnancy and moms with autoimmune disorders, things like that, that can make the pregnancy like higher risk. So first off, my role on the rotation was on the gyn side, on the gynecologic side, very similar to my surgery clerkship. You're going in, especially for like urogyn and benign gynecology, like it's surgeries like all day. Gyn off the same, like they have inpatient, like, like patients you have to round on and stuff, but like it's surgeries from, you know, seven to whenever they stop. So on the services like gynonc where there were inpatients, you'd get up to the hospital, you would like go meet some of your patients, the ones that you're kind of assigned to, to, which is called pre-rounding. You'd ask them questions, see how they're doing. It's like the butt crack of dawn. Everybody hates it. Then you go around later with the whole team um, and kind of do the same thing. Talk about their care, their plan for the day, etc. You'd go back, you'd write notes, you'd write discharge summaries uh, for patients that were leaving that day. And then by the time it was seven o'clock, you should be over in the operating room because there's definitely surgeries going on. And in the operating room, of course, like as a med student, my role was variable on how many people was in there. So sometimes it was like like an attending, a fellow, a, a resident. And like my role was pretty much just like watching. And then other times it would be, you know, just like me and a resident or just me and the fellow or something. And so I would have a lot more active role in the surgeries. And I get to like suture and, you know, do some actual like parts of the case. And labor and delivery, this will differ, I think, depending on where you go. Cause like talking to some people that are in more community type hospitals, like I'm at a super academic center. So the moms that come to our hospital that are actually being taken care of by MDs instead of like a midwife or something are usually like pretty high risk or they're having like scary deliveries. And so like I, well, personally, I'll say I never caught a baby. Like I never delivered a baby by myself. I did a hand Hand over hand delivery so like I, I was kind of like doing it but the resident was kind of like putting my hands in the right places which is like honestly a, it was a great and beautiful moment and like I'm so glad that I got to do that it was something like going on to to labor and delivery that I really really wanted to do was to deliver a baby and I I feel pretty like fulfilled that I got to do a hand over hand delivery with the resident. So I'm really thankful that my attendings were advocating for that. But for every patient that I went into their room, the med students would always deliver the placenta. So I don't know if y'all know about 
this. I didn't really know about this until I think probably med school. But labor happens, um, labor and like delivery happens in three stages. So you have your, your labor course, you have the delivery of the baby, and then you have like the delivery of the placenta. So that was always something that I got to do. And I actually found it very fun because I like to do anything that's like hands-on. And this is definitely a very hands-on thing. You can kind of look up like like what delivering a placenta is like but essentially you just like literally like you you clamp it with a hemostat and you kind of pull on the cord until the placenta kind of comes out and you have to kind of like rub like the mom's like lower abdomen to kind of get the uterus to clamp down as well so that she doesn't have a ton of bleeding so it was like I don't know sometimes it felt like sort of an important job and that's coming from me who's kind of a cynic and I kind of am the type of person that's like Ugh, I'm not doing anything that's important in this hospital I don't know why I'm even here yes I am very negative I'm trying to be better about it but like on ob -GYN, like there were definitely times where I was like, I feel like I'm making a difference in this patient's care. Like I feel like I'm actually doing something that like an intern or a resident would do. You also do C-sections and during C-sections, students are pretty like helpful. C-sections happen really fast and they're quite moist. It's a lot of fluids going on there. There's, you know, blood and amniotic fluid plus minus meconium, which is the baby's first poop. So like as a med student, like it was kind of um, my job to keep the field sort of like clean so that people could see what they're doing. And I helped with a lot of suturing as well because those are just fast cases and like all the residents that are on labor and delivery are the ones that are having to do the C-section. So it's like people are in C-sections and then they're like trying to get out of the room as fast as possible because they have other patients that are also like doing other types of deliveries. I don't know if I can even say like these words on YouTube. I'm going to get flagged if I... Anyway, a spontaneous bone and a delivery instead of a C-section. So that's kind of like the general schedule and um, my role as a med student. Something that surprised me about ob -GYN was how like, I don't know, physically demanding it is. I mean, I don't know if like the first C-section that you see will probably be the most brutal surgery that you see. Like I, I was in ortho cases and I, <laughs> I think the ob -GYN cases take the cake. A C-section is like a very fast kind of thing. They have to get into the abdomen really fast because oftentimes they're in there for stat sections where the baby is like decompensating or has like non-reassuring non fetal heart tones or like basically their heart rate is indicating that they're in distress. So like they have to get in there really quick and the things that they have to do to get in there really quick are just very like, I don't want to say barbaric because I don't want to scare anyone like it's a necessary thing but it's just it's not at all the kind of careful surgery that you think of when you think of surgery and something that I feel like I learned on ob or like that I don't know if it really surprised me like I kind of went into ob expecting this but like I, I it was a really helpful lesson I think to teach me is that patients do not always agree with providers about what their medical care should look like. There are plenty of mothers and fathers who have a certain birth plan picked out and they do not want to skew from that plan. Like they will kind of only do it if it's like life-threatening essentially. I'm sure in even some cases they maybe not even then. So it's kind of interesting because I feel like we go through medical school and we kind of are like, okay, we're learning all this stuff so that we can be the best doctor possible and th that we can provide the best care to these people. And then you get to a place like ob -GYN or I'm seeing the same thing on pediatrics where you will recommend something for a patient and they will just decline it. And that's totally fine. I think it's just kind of like surprising. And it was like a good lesson to learn early on in my career to not, you know, that everything's shared decision-making. So we shouldn't like, like we're not God. We can't like make these people do anything. And we're just kind of like helping them um, enter into like the best place for their health. Similarly on the gynecology side, I mean, there were plenty of patients. We were like, maybe, you know, you're, you're, you know, 45. I don't know if you should be thinking about having a baby right now, or if you're having certain high risk behaviors where you're at risk of becoming pregnant and you don't want to, then perhaps you should be on some sort of contraception, but patients will, will just say no. They will just disagree with you and that's okay. So I'm really thankful for ob -GYN for like teaching me that. And I don't know, I feel like it was a really good space to learn like sure decision making because like all the residents and attendings were super like nice and kind of just like knew their role. I think they like navigated that super well, in my opinion. So the million dollar question, did I like ob -GYN? Yes, I actually did. I loved ob -GYN. It was actually like my favorite clerkship, even though I literally thought it would be my least favorite. And I've only, I've done, I'm on my last one now. So I liked it better than surgery, than internal medicine, than neurology, than psychiatry. 
than family medicine. I'm really liking pediatrics though, so I'll see if it kind of takes the cake. Now, would I do ob as a career? No, not personally. Like, I respect the ob so much. They have incredible emotional intelligence and emotional endurance. But for me, there were just other specialties outside of my clerkships, like on electives, that I just liked a little bit better. So ob kind of like fell down a little bit on the list. It also is definitely not like a lifestyle specialty because you can just get called in at any time. Like, people labor all night and people deliver babies all night and you have to be present for them so like those overnight shifts and getting called in and everything is just kind of a part of the job and even if you specialize in something like gynonc like those also have downsides as well so i actually considered it for like a second because i kind of already know what i want to do but like once i like got into ob and like realized how much i was like enjoying it i was like man like maybe i should rethink things but it really just came down to like me probably not having the love like enough love for it to like last um, a whole career in it. But I will say like some of my favorite moments in med school so far I've been on ob -GYN. Like the first C-section I ever saw was so, so cool. I actually wrote a poem about it. I'm not gonna like share it right now, but or, like I'm not gonna like spoken word it to you right now. So you don't have to be scared, but like I, we had to like write about an emotional moment in med school and like send it to our mentors or whatever and like I sent that um, and my mentor was like oh my gosh this is so good can I send it to some of the others so and she can do poetry she, and she's a poet no I'm just kidding but it was an incredible moment like a lot of these pregnant people are pretty healthy and young and don't have other medical problems other than like you know the risk of being pregnant and then like babies are cute and stuff and it's just a magical time like the, these parents are so 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 happy to like have a baby and it's just really really special to like play a part in that i think my favorite moment was like when i was in there with this mom and it was her first baby and she was pushing for like three hours and like labor you hear people say like i was in labor for like 26 hours or whatever they're not in active labor for that long like they're in kind of like latent labor where they're having a little bit of like mild contractions and their cervix is dilating a little bit but once you're actually in active labor you can only go up to like uh, it depends there's guidelines whatever like four-ish hours at met max before they're like okay we, we're taking you for a c-section but you can push for a few hours as well and that's like when you're already completely dilated now you start pushing and like usually depending on how many kids um the woman has had like it usually doesn't take like too too long but in people who this is their first schedule it'll, it'll take a long time um or it could so this mom this poor mother she had been pushing for like three hours and like i was in there like almost the entire time like you know holding the leg like every like every you know two minutes like pulling her leg up and she would push and it was like I don't know like me and her husband were on either side and then like that um I think it was a midwife was you know down at the end of the bed kind of helping facilitate that and it was just so cool to because I feel like I you know like got to know her a little bit and like connect with her over those like three hours and then like when she actually had the baby it was just like super cool to see her and her husband bonding over it like they were kind of like freaking out and it was just a really special moment so like don't be scared of ob -GYN. If you hear that it's bad or that it's toxic, I've had great experiences with residents, even at what's historically considered one of the more toxic programs in the country, like genuinely. So it can be a really, really fulfilling clerkship if you let it be. And I like, I just, I know that mostly this is probably like pre-meds watching this. I'm just trying to like give you something to like think about and to look forward to, or maybe like a glimpse behind the curtain of what to expect. Cause I feel like I didn't know at all what to expect. And I can give like a lot more tips about like what it's like to be a med student. Cause it, like, I'm like figuring, you know, we all figure it out just like once we go through it but I feel like it could be a little bit helpful to have some mentorship along the way but if you just want me to go back to doing MCAT stuff I you know my next video probably will be related to the MCAT so let me know what you want to see down in the comments below or let me know what other clerkship you want me to cover if you want me to do this again so I will see you guys in the next video bye